Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the very special const modifier. Now, it's a little bit different than when we talked about constants in an earlier video, but we're gonna dive into that and understand all the differences and when you would want to use the const keyword, specifically when it comes to functions. So yeah, let's just get started. But first, you gotta check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy it to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, so here we have an array, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a function to basically print this array. And I know we've done this like a million times in this series, but you know, a little bit of practice can't hurt. Now, when you take an argument of an array, you create exactly the same data type. We just say int data and put the square brackets there. You can name it some different, but just for coherency, I often name them the same thing, but it's totally up to you. There are different variables. We'll probably also have a parameter for the size. And then what we'll do is we'll just go through a for loop. And then we could use that i variable to access each element. And now where does the const keyword come up? Well, if you look at this array, it's only supposed to print the array. It doesn't actually change anything in the array, but there's no way to really guarantee that. So what I could actually do is I could actually increase the data elements by one. So let's say we, we do data of i plus plus. Now the actual array is going to be modified. And that's because when you pass an array to a function, it decays to a pointer and the same area of memory is accessible and changeable. So that means if I go down here and do an output, we'll just output data index zero. When we do a compile and run, let's see what happens. And before we do that, we actually need to call this function up here. So we're going to say print array and we're going to pass in data size three. Now let's compile and see if we got any issues. Ah uh, yes, I forgot to do the return type for print array. We'll just make it void. Now let's compile and run. All right, so you can see the data is two, three, four. So each one was increased by one. And even outside of that print array function, when we access that data, it still has that same value. So the function essentially modified that data. And sometimes that's fine. You can create functions to modify your data. But there are particular situations when you basically want to be able to trust a function to not change your data. And the only way that's going to be possible is if the function has the parameter labeled as const. So if you guys remember what the const word means, it basically creates a variable that cannot change. So it's kind of like a constant. So it's perfectly okay for us to pass a non-constant variable to this constant variable. In the scope of this function, we will not be able to change data and outside the scope of the function, this variable data still remains non-constant. So we can go and change it down here, but not inside of this function up here. So let's compile. And you can see we get an error. It says read only variable is not assignable. So it's not going to let us do something like this. And this basically has to do with the integrity of the function. Clearly we could create a function that doesn't change data and we wouldn't need that const keyword, but it's more of an integrity thing saying, this is a promise to not change your data. Now this will also be important if there are other functions, let's create another function, we'll just call it do something. And what this function is going to do is it's going to do something. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is we're just going to take an array and inside a print array, what we're going to do is we're going to call that function. So we'll just say do something and pass in data like so. And now compile. And what is going on? We got an error. It says no matching function for call to do something. Candidate function not viable. First argument const int pointer would lose const qualifier. Basically what that means is this, this parameter here does not have that const qualifying the data type. So that means this function is not able to call that function because it could potentially change that data, which would violate the promise to the caller. So this thing's labeled as constant here, which is basically telling main, hey, we're not going to change your data. 
But if it calls some other function that changes the data, then it's violating that technically. It's violating that promise indirectly, potentially, by calling a function that could change that data. So in order for this to work, any functions you call also have to be labeled const for this variable. So when we compile now, it should work, and the application is going to work in exactly the same way. This will usually come up when we're working with arrays. That's because they're by default modifiable inside of functions. Other data types are not modifiable by default inside of functions, such as vectors, so you don't have to worry about labeling things as const. Just don't pass things by reference, and you should be good. And speaking of passing things by reference, we've talked about it here and there throughout this series, but the next video we're actually going to devote to that. We're going to talk about what it means to pass by value versus pass by reference, and then we'll go through some examples where passing by reference can do some cool stuff. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. Be sure to check that out and be sure to subscribe. Thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video.